This is part 7 of my equipment series of videos, in this case covering German self-propelled anti-aircraft guns and how they were organised. Because of the number of vehicles in this video, I divided this video into two parts, this being part 1. I created these videos in order to assist my efforts in determining what equipment was used when and in what formations. This is a specific issue when creating equipment data charts or organisational tables for the German Army in World War II. Like many other nations during the early period of the war, the Germans experimented with mounting flak guns on top of trucks. However, except in some exceptional circumstances, these were generally not successful. The truck mounts made these weapons very visible, and as they lacked any protection, they were highly vulnerable. The 8.8cm flak was mounted on the Vormag heavy truck. As far as I can ascertain, only 16 were converted and equipped Abteilung Flak Regiment No. 42. This picture shows the 8.8cm flak being readied for firing. Uh, this was not a weapon system that was instantly deployed. Obviously some preparation was required. However, as they were almost certainly equipped or organised under army or corps level and probably for rear positions, this is not a major issue. A flak regiment consists of a variable number of flak battalions. Assuming these weapons were allocated to a heavy flak battalion, we could expect this type of structure, although I would expect six batteries to consist to be within the battalion. Regardless, this was certainly held at army or corps level and would be unlikely to find itself in a divisional level formation, unless attached for some specific reason. My estimate is these were very much rear position uh, defence forces. The Germans, uh, like many other nationalities, mounted AA guns on trucks to improve their mobility. I'm uncertain how successfully they, they, successful they were, but it's very difficult finding references. I suspect this was not a common weapon system. Nonetheless, the Germans mounted a, a wide variety of light anti-aircraft guns on a very wide variety of various truck chassis. If this 3D drawing is accurate, it seems to imply a standard Flak 38, or perhaps Flak 30, was simply mounted on a truck in the field with minimal modifications, apart from a base plate. I have no idea how these were organised. I suspect they were simply existing 2cm Flak guns mounted on any trucks that could be found, rather than these guns being towed possibly in the flak battalions of a light or panzer division in the desert. These weapons were very vulnerable to enemy strafing and it would have been very difficult to dismount the weapon if a prepared position was required. While wheeled mounted flak could keep up with motorised troops, it could not keep up with any track vehicles. The answer was to mount flak on half tracks. In many cases this was a field conversion. The original purpose was to ensure these weapons could keep up with the tanks, or half-tracks. However, as with truck-mounted flak, they were rather vulnerable to strafing attacks. The answer was to armour the half-tracks. Initially, the armour was designed to protect the vehicle from small arms fire, especially in Russia, but this initial Luftwaffe-initiated effort did not protect the weapon from air attack. Early in the war, this may have been acceptable but by August 1943 a new solution was required. The Germans began to armour the engine and driving cab as well as ensuring all flak had shields. This provided reasonable protection against fighters strafing, although if the fighters had rockets or bombs it was a different story. Nonetheless, the resulting weapons were very effective, although with the highly mobile Panthers, these half-track mounted vehicles may have found it hard to keep up. While not specifically uh, related to anti-aircraft guns, um, I found it was important to understand the various names or designations provided to the Maltier half-track, which was used as a mount for various anti-aircraft guns. Maltier, or SDK Z3, or in English, Mule, is the name given to a series of half-track trucks used by the Germans during World War II. They were based on the Opel, Mercedes-Benz, Alfa Romeo, or Ford trucks, and used redundant Panzer I track assemblies. These vehicles had a load of 2-3 to three tons. Heavier trucks of 4 tons payload were fitted with the Panzer II track assemblies, and 
which I think was also called the SDK of Z4, although other sources indicated this designation was only used when the vehicle was armoured. A number of armoured Maltairs were built from 1943 onwards as self-propelled anti-aircraft mounts. What confuses me is why is this Maltair called SDK of Z4? The track assembly is Panzer I, so I would assume it was the lighter one. This is not armoured at all, so I have to assume there may have been an error. As we'll discover later in this video, there's a bit of confusion around uh, the whole Maltair designations. You know, what exactly was an SDK of Z3 and what exactly was an SDK of Z4? The Germans mounted the 2cm Flak 38 on a SDK of Z3 Maltier half-track. The vehicle was a very simple conversion and I suspect most of these done were done in the field, thus represents conversions. I found no production vehicle figures for this specific vehicle. I did find a reasonable number of pictures of the 2cm Flak 38 or 30 mounted on a Maltier, so I suspect this was a rather common conversion. While I would expect this conversion to be quite common in the desert, this picture seems to indicate it's somewhere in Europe, so it was also common up there as well. Notice the track assemblies are Panzer I. The Germans also mounted the 3.7cm Flak 37 on an SDK Z3 multi of half track. While I found one source which indicated 339 were produced, this vehicle was a very simple conversion and I suspect most of this was done in the field thus represents conversions rather than production figures. The Germans also mounted a 2cm flak on these vehicles as well, although I also found no production figures for this. It's interesting to note that the 3.7 was considered far superior to the 2cm or even the 2cm quad because of its range and when a shell hit it had a bigger effect. I suspect 3.7 was a flak gun that was something that was more popular in the latter period of the war, 2cm being 2cm flak being more than adequate for the early period of the war. I did find it very difficult to find pictures of this particular weapon system, that is uh, the 3.7 centimetre flak on the Multia 3. Um, this could imply it was actually not very common. While the tracks look like they come from a Panzer 1, the wheels are solid, which is interesting. I've never found a picture of one of these vehicles which use Panzer 2 running gear. Also note, only four bogies were used instead of the five on a typical Panzer I. My gut feeling is most of the 3.7s were mounted on the armoured chassis rather than the unarmoured chassis, and most of the 2cm single guns were mounted on the unarmoured chassis. But this is purely a guess based on my observation and research of this video. By August 1943, the Panzergrenadier regiments of the Panzergrenadier divisions began to be equipped with a company or battery of 12 self-propelled 2cm flat guns, which would have most likely been the Maltier or a possibly later vehicle. It's also likely that 3.7cm armoured flak may have been placed in these formations as well, although probably more later in the war rather than early. This would have replaced the towed flak weapons which were normally in this particular formation. In the same division, the Germans began to field a self-propelled flak company or battery in the flak battalion, which may have been, could have been Maltiers as well, particularly in the Panzergrenadier divisions. Of course, these could have also been SDK of Z6s or SDK of Z8 mounting flak guns. However, I suspect that these superior weapons may have been reserved for the Panzer divisions. I'm uncertain if this vehicle is the standard SDK Z3 or if it's a heavier 4 ton Maltier which used Panzer II running gear and thus could have been called a SDK Z4. My sources indicate both could be the case. Regardless, this would have been a simple conversion rather than a purpose built weapon system. Heavier trucks, 4 ton payloads, were fitted with the Panzer II track assemblies, as I mentioned earlier. Although they lacked the overall mobility of purse purpose built half tracks, they were cheaper and sufficiently effective. From 1943, some multi-year trucks were fitted with armoured bodies. In this case, from this source, it designated SDK of Z4s. I was unable to find any photographs of the heavier Maltier using the Panzer II running gear, but I did find pictures of models, as you can see here. 
While this is a wild guess, my references to, or the references that I've read to an unarmored SDKZ4 with a 3.7 centimeter flak could have simply me been incorrectly used to describe a, a heavier four-ton multia with the 3.7 centimeter flak. Basically, uh, the four-ton uh, weight capacity of the vehicle was mixed up with uh, SDKZ4. Only a guess, but it could explain why I've got so much confusion around, you know, the whole SDK of Z4 or what exactly it was. I found several sources which described a SDK of Z4 with a 3.7 centimeter weapon on it. However, when I actually went looking for photographs or even diagrams, I simply could not find any. As a result, I'm uncertain if this weapon existed at all. I suspect this could have been a field conversion of a standard SDKZ3 unarmoured multi-air truck, similar to the Opal field conversion in the bottom right, and someone simply called it SDKZ4 as a result. I, you know, as I indicated in my in the last image, there's a little bit of confusion about uh, exactly what an SDKZ4 is, etc. As I mentioned before, I was unable to find an armoured multi-air mounting a flak anywhere. So I'm certain if any of these vehicles existed, be it 3.7 or 2 centimetre, many trucks mounted flak were armoured in the field by surrounding the engine and driver cab with sheets of metal. So it's possible this weapon was actually another field conversion rather than a vehicle like the SDK Z4 self-propelled um, vehicle that you see here. In this particular case, it's an ammo carrier for a SDK Z4 rocket propelled, rocket propelled artillery battery. I did find a reference um, of 12 SDK Z4 1s in the light division in Africa, in this case armed with 2 cm flak rather than 3.7 cm flak. Again, another bit of confusion. Uh, I still think SDK Z4 in this particular case refers to the a Panzer II running gear rather than Panzer I. But again, that's only my theory and you may not agree with it. These were part of the flak battalions of the light division. These may have been the multi-air trucks mounting the 2 cm flak as part of a field conversion. In this diagram we're shown the 3.7 cm flak which could have been available depending on availability of the 3.7 cm flak weapon. The desert seemed to create a lot of ad hoc formations well before Russia. The Schwerwehrmacht Schlepper was a German armoured half track. In addition to the basic cargo role, these vehicles were adopted to mount the Flak Fielding 38 quadruple 2cm flak gun. These mounts were placed at the centre of the cargo area with a large gun shield. The sides of the cargo compartment folded down to give the crew more room to service or serve the weapon. Ammunition was carried in the rear of the cargo area. I am uncertain how many were produced. My guess is 125. I found it rather difficult to find photos of the Schwerwehrmachtschlepper. Here is another rather nice picture of a model um, to give you an idea of what it looked like from the top. The uh, Schwerwehrmachtschlepper was also used to mount the um, medium 3.7 cm Flak 43 anti-aircraft guns. These, these were mounted or at the centre of the cargo area with a large gun shield. Sides of the cargo compartment folded down to give the crew more room to serve the weapon. Ammunition was carried at the rear of the cargo area. It's pretty much similar to the 2cm quad version, except it mounted a 3.7cm flak weapon, which was considered, particularly later in the war, superior to the quad 2cm. Unlike the Maltea, which mounted a flak, these weapons were not a field conversion and were produced specifically as an anti-aircraft weapon system. By June 1944, the Panzer Divisions may have started receiving the more modern armoured self-propelled mounts, possibly using the Schwerwehrmachtschlepper mounted flak gun. As with most usages of the 2cm weapon, the 3.7cm is assumed to also be present, particularly later in the war. The 3.7cm Flak 36 Alf Fahrgestet zu Kraftwagen 5 ton or SDKZ 6-2 was fitted with a 3.7 cm Flak 36 anti-aircraft gun. Sides would have folded down to allow space to, for the crew to work on the weapon. Crew was about seven. 
The production of the SD Cove set, SD Cove set 6 ended in 1942, so I'm uncertain if this was a conversion or produced from scratch. I suspect the former. As only 750 SD Cove set 6 6s were built, this represents a major investment in this chassis if 399 were converted. As you can see by this photograph, um, there wasn't really much protection of the gun crew against enemy fire, either ground fire or enemy fighters strafing. Uh, these weapons, or I had a reference uh, that this weapon was allocated to the Flak Abteilung 75, which was subordinate to the 12th Panzer Division. As so many were produced, I assume there were significantly more formations and divisions which uh, benefited from this weapon system. The 5cm Flak 41 Aus Zess Thalafetter 5 ton SD Cove Z6 2 was fitted with a 5cm Flak 41 anti aircraft gun. As few 5cm Flak 41s were produced, only a low number were converted in this, into this vehicle. My references show about 20 conversion. The production of the SD Cove Z6 ended in 1942, so this weapon is almost certainly a conversion of an existing SD Cove Z6. I'm un uncertain if any of these weapons actually saw action, although with a production total of 20, I suspect that they may have been issued to units if nothing more than just simply to test the weapon systems. Note the stabilisation system. Um, obviously, some effort was required in order to get this weapon into action, unlike the 3.7cm version. Possibly another reason why this was not particularly very popular or produced in any large numbers. The SD Cove Z6 based flak weapons were rather large, which may imply they were, implied they were used in the flak battalions, which were part of flak regiments. They were produced uh, rather early in the war, but apart from the divisions in the desert, there are only few examples of divisions having organic self propelled flak weapons during this period. Placing them at corp level would allow them to be allocated as required. It's likely that there are only 10 to 20 of these formations, which is not a great deal of formations. I did find a reference uh, that at least one Panzer Division in the Eastern Front uh, was equipped with one company or battery of this weapon system in their flak battalion. The SD Cove Z7 was armed with a 2cm flak feeling 38L65 quad anti-aircraft gun mounted appearing with both open and armoured cabinet. 750 or 800 were produced by the end of December 1944. Um, this total was for both the armoured and unarmoured. Based on the numbers uh, produced, this must have been, or could have easily been issued to all the Panzer divisions, if not also the Panzer Grenadier divisions. These would have, there would have been sufficient vehicles available to equip most of the Panzer or Panzer Grenadier divisions in 1943. I'm assuming they were primarily allocated to the flak battalions within those divisions rather than as support formations attached to the Panzer regiments or Panzer brigades. But on the other hand, I could have been wrong and maybe they were also allocated there. Major issue with unarmoured self-propelled guns were their vulnerability to enemy aircraft, specifically strafing fight fire by fighters. Starting in late 1943, the SDK Z7-1 was upgraded with an armoured engine bay and driver's cabinet, which, coupled with the armoured shield on the gun, gave the crew good protection against enemy strafing attacks, as well as um, small arm fires from the ground. Of course, if the enemy aircraft had bombs, it was another story. 750-800 were produced by the end of December 44, both armoured and unarmoured. Most of the early self-propelled anti-aircraft guns had the same problem. They were too vulnerable against enemy fire, either small arms or enemy strafing attacks. Beginning around late 1943, the SD Cove Z71 got an armoured driver's cab and an armoured shield in front of the radiator. Actually, the 2cm flat feeling 38 had gun shields as um, standard. The gun shields on this vehicle was demounted to prevent damage during training. The earliest mass-produced non-field conversion self-propelled flak weapons were probably the SD Cove Z7 mounted versions, which came out initially in 1941. 
This weapon would have been allocated initially to the flak battalions of the flak regiments, but uh, quickly would have moved to the flak battalions of the Panzer divisions, and probably also the uh, Panzer Grenadier divisions. This shows a possible uh, flak company slash battery of a uh, flak battalion within a Panzer division, uh, probably early war in Russia. As with most of the other mounts, there was a general trend. Most started with a single 2cm, moved to a quad 2cm, and then moved to a 3.7cm flat gun as the war progressed. And the SDK of Z7 flak mount was certainly no exception. Now we know that uh, in 1944, uh, production of all these vehicles shifted to the 3.7 flak 43. Now, we also know by August 1943, there was an increased emphasis on the 3.7 centimetre flak. Which brings up uh, some interesting uh, conundrums here, because if um, the later versions of this vehicle had 3.7s, particularly if most of them came out from about August 43, then that happened to be the same time that the armoured armored cabinets, cabins and armoured engine bays were coming out. As a result, I would have expected that most of 3.7s use the armoured cabinet what, rather than non-armoured cabinet. I think, uh, as a result, most of the unarmoured SDK of Z7s may have been um, older 2cm armed uh, vehicles that were upgraded 3.7 rather than built from scratch. It's uh, difficult for me to ascertain. Anyway, in total, uh, for both open and armoured cabinet variety, about a thousand were produced by the end of January 1945. I did find this photograph of an SDK Z7-2 unarmoured, uh, which I'm guessing is at the factory. While I'm uncertain how many unarmoured vehicles were produced, based on my observation of how many photos are available, I suspect not very much at all. As with most of the unarmoured uh, SBAA guns, the Germans quickly armoured them from late 1943 due to their vulnerability to uh, small arms fire or enemy strafing attacks. Based on my personal opinion, most of the production at this point onwards was armoured. Unlike the SDK of Z6, these vehicles were not converted in the field or from old vehicles and looked like they were produced from scratch. Although it was a rather expensive process, uh, which could be one reason why uh, the bulk of these, the weapons in this grouping was actually based on the SDK of Z10, which we'll be dealing with later. Towards the very end of the war, the 3.7cm Flak 43 was used in place of the 3.7cm 36. However, sources indicated there were only a few of these conversions uh, done because uh, they were begun rather late in the war. I've not found many references uh, for where the 3.7cm equipped self-propelled weapons were allocated, but it's likely they were used to replace towed weapons. The Panzer Division Regiment contained four 3.7cm AA weapons, so it's possible these weapons were slowly replaced with the self-propelled versions. I suspect the armoured versions specifically, which was more useful in the front line. Uh, unarmoured self-propelled weapons as I indicated before, were rather vulnerable to fighter strafing. The other theory is that basically um, when it was decided that 3.7 was far more effective than the 2cm, uh, basically the 2cm as they were lost were replaced with 3.7s. Again, um, there's not many references that I could find to give me much clarity on this particular point. This completes uh, my seventh video on equipment, which in this case is self-propelled anti-aircraft guns of the German Army. In this particular case, part one of a two-part series. I have no doubt I shall be updating this video in the future as I obtain new source material. I've posted some of the source material I've used in the URL shown in the image. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hill, Heimatland zu kämpfen.